The Tran clan that terrorized Las Vegas casinos. This is season one, episode one. So it's actually the first one. And again, I've not watched this. I've not watched any of the wonder stuff. So I know a lot about this history. As I told you, I always found it very fascinating, especially card cheats, magic. It's just always very fascinated by it. Big shout out to wonder because this is awesome content. Las Vegas, Nevada the landmark of modern gambling. Yes. More than 30 million people flock here every year, hoping to hit the jackpot. They'll bet $115 billion. 115 billion. And odds oh are God. they will go home with less than they came with. 100%. You will lose in gambling. It is stacked against you. Well, you won't always lose. But in the long run, you are destined to lose. There's a reason why Vegas lives and, and thrives. It's built on losers. So just remember that. Go to gamble. If you're ever going someplace like Vegas or anything to gamble, go there in moderation to have entertainment and fun. Don't go there thinking you're going to walk home a millionaire. It's just... Hey, well, there's a slim, tiny chance it could happen. It's very, very tiny. The majority of people lose because the odds are stacked against you. That's just how gambling is. Being probably nets somewhere in the millions, if not tens of millions of dollars. And some of the most difficult cheaters to catch are the ones who know how to work the system best. From casino employees to people throwing the games and those trying to stop them. It's an insider's war on the casino floor. It does really boil down to good guys versus bad guys. If you're coming in to cheat and to get what's not yours, you're breaking the law and you're on the other side. Hey, dude, I love that guy. I love the Goldberg guy, dude. He's awesome. Cheaters are exposed doing what they ah, do. Ah, I actually know some of these scams. So this one is actually a device. So if you could see the quarters right there, this was a device put in slot machines that locked the infrared that allowed big payouts to happen. This, uh, I don't know the exact term for it, but uh, what he's doing here is that there's a variety of ways to stack your bet after you've won the hand to guarantee a win for example is you're not supposed to touch anything when the bet is done only the dealer can there's rules for that so you can't put extra chips on there but there's certain ways uh where you could kind of hide and mess people would um you know try to fix their chips but slide you know a bigger chip denomination behind it so the dealer couldn't see it and that's what this is here so you have to be really quick with it you'd be like oh sorry i didn't you know mean that and then kind of slip the chip you know, like a hundred dollar chip if you only had like 50. It's Vegas from the inside. Vegas. Let's go. I love watching this with you guys. Some of the most common cheats caught on tape are fairly simple. Past posting. Past posting. That was the name. After you know the winning number. Operating as a team, the man at the right of the screen is working with the man at the top of the screen. In an effort to distract the dealer yep. who's not in on the scam, the man on the right places a late bet that is rejected. So did you did you catch that? I just saw it over there. As he distracts the dealer there, they'll probably show it back, but this guy actually runs in and drops another. Is ah, elsewhere, see? The cheater right there. At the top of the I caught that beforehand. It's all about distracting the dealer, and the dealer only has two eyes. You know. Adds more chips onto the winning number for a payout of 35 to 1. Hitting Other a number in roulette is 35 to 1. Even putting a dollar on there is another $35. Here, a woman strategically uses her purse as an attempt to block security cameras. Then, her partner in crime comes in to block with his body. The man seated is using ah. a specially designed tool that's inserted into the mouth of the video poker there machine. There it is. He's attempting to trick the payout sensor into triggering a jackpot. This is an old one. No matter what they know or don't know about security, cheaters always think they're smarter. Rest so assured, the casinos are watching 24-7. And if anything defines the security, eyes in the sky. it's the eye in the sky. I do believe there are more cameras in Las Vegas than Washington, D.C. So here in Las Vegas, Big yep. Brother is watching. And this is older, so more so now. There's cameras everywhere in Vegas. Everywhere. It's estimated that there are tens of thousands of surveillance cameras blanketing nearly every inch of every casino. And when something goes down, they will have it on tape. It's eyes where we can't be. Is that because of some kink? I just saw your reaction because I noticed it too. Force multiplier, if you will, for the security and the surveillance staff. Since their earliest days, casinos have tracked the action on the floor. For decades, surveillance was little more than beefy men walking the floor, yeah. looking for obvious cheats. But when cheaters oh. upped their game, so did casinos. 
catwalks were the big breakthrough. Ah. Suddenly, surveillance could invisibly monitor the games from above. Imagine having that job, walking up there, looking down there, making sure no one's cheating. That's pretty difficult. With the help of two That's a cool nerds. job, though. In downtown Vegas, the Hotel Nevada opened its doors in 1907, renamed the Golden Gate Casino in 1955. It still has the remnants of their catwalk, the original wow. Eye in the Sky. Yeah, so there's in Vegas now you have like New Vegas and Old Vegas. Old Vegas is like the older casinos that are still there from like the early days, you know, like the Old Vegas days. And then you have the new modern ones like with the boats and the, <laughs> the fireworks and you go there with your family and like there's a pirate ship and it's... <laughs> Lights everywhere, six consoles. It's like, that's New Vegas. But if you go down the strip, all the way down, there's Old Vegas, and they still have some of the old casinos and, like, old-style feel. There's got into the catwalk through a secret entrance on the roof. So there you see it. That's the cart that they would lay down face first on, and then they push themselves up and down the track, exactly like being in their mind. That's cool. Because this would be closed so that nobody knew he was in there. Wow. While older hotels are renovated to keep up with cheaters, the new casinos are designed with security in uh, mind. Yeah. There the you go. Resort and Casino was constructed from the ground up to be cheat proof. Security Chief Ted Whiting spent more than three years helping to design ARIA's state of the art surveillance system. Anyone who's thinking of cheating in Vegas should think twice. <laughs> We're yeah. getting better at this, especially specifically at Aria. We're getting really good at it. Yeah, if you guys are ever thinking about cheating Vegas, don't do it. A lot of cheaters that, that do plan, they start in AC, Atlantic City, which is like a mini Vegas, but it's got a lot less security than Vegas does. So they start their antics there. It's a little bit more lax, I guess you could say. Still, you get federally prosecuted and you get in trouble and go to jail it's a lot different less security compared to vegas and but there's only so much money you could get and guys it's not, i'm not giving you tips don't cheat you will get caught no tips this is not cheating this is for entertainment purposes do not think about cheating at all we've got over 1100 cameras on our casino floor jesus in the deepest a lot more now. of the hotel's basement is the surveillance nerve center from here, they can oversee more than 150,000 square feet of casino floor, including 145 gaming tables and almost wow. 2,000 slot machines. We have seven workstations, about 40 monitors, and of course we have access to all 3,500 cameras on this city center campus. Surveillance has come a long way. Even I started in, in the mid-90s and the cameras were still pretty good. Back in the old days, we used... <laughs> That hairstyle for back then, that makes sense. Whenever you see, like, the old things. That's, like, what you think of. The boomer days, Back bro. in the old days, we used <laughs> analog cameras. So an analog camera, they come in two varieties. PTZ, which is pan, tilt, zoom. And that means that our operators can move them. They can zoom in and out, back and forward, up and down. The other cameras that we used were fixed cameras. And those cameras are, are just a camera that sees one spot and doesn't move. So those are good. And they, we did surveillance for forever, for 30 years with those cameras, and it worked out fine. We opened Aria, There's though. We wanted to take the best of the old technology the and blend that with the best of the new technology, which is HD cameras or high-def cameras. And what that allowed us to do is increase our resolution by three times. Now we have the luxury of reviewing the video. We can prove that somebody That's cheated, what... and we can see it a lot Basically, better. what they have is YouTube's uh, live stream player compared to Twitch, where Twitch, you can't you know, uh, go watch it like live and go back and everything. You have to actually go into videos and click it and then go looking and everything. With YouTube, you can just go back and be like, oh, you know, like easy review footage. Better. In this cheat, the cameras caught what was almost too fast for the human eye. The cheater seated on the left is playing blackjack and wins when the dealer busts. The dealer pays the cheater on his original bet, but the player flicks back the payout and then seamlessly replaces the stack, including a higher value chip. Oh, okay, so he went there. All right, so never mind. So I was actually wrong in that part. So he won on this one, kicked back and replaced the other chip where he was sort, where he was distracted, probably put like a hundred chip underneath and he's gonna tell the dealer now, hey, you didn't pay me out correctly. The cheater is indignant Say, that yeah. the dealer didn't. Like I said, so now he's gonna be like, hey, you didn't pay me. Uh, you forgot this one, and he put it at the bottom so it doesn't look, you know, and the deal's, uh, uh, the deal's gonna look and be like, oh, sorry, I didn't. The pit boss is called over. They review the tape, 
and ultimately, the player is asked to leave the casino. What they did was they looked at the footage, saw he kicked it back, looked at the camera footage, be like, no, no, we paid you, we saw that. One of the ways that you can get by those cameras is the uh, the past posting. It's tricky, but if you don't bring up any evidence like this guy brought attention to it, to go back to the camera, is probably a big number he put it. He probably put a $500 chip underneath there. Most of the time, they'll just go to the pit boss and they'll be like, okay, pay him. If it's like a $25 chip or five, you know, but if it's a big chip underneath there, like 500, they'll be like, give us a second. They'll make a call. They'll review the footage but if it's little they'll probably just usually he's doing something dishonest they're trying so hard to act natural can casinos kick you out without paying you for the chips you have that's a good question most of the times from the things i've understood in the stories i heard and the stuff i've learned uh they will pay you out but they'll ask you to leave from there now if you're using a device or something like uh say like a card counter and you get caught you are not getting any of that money and you're probably gonna lose a ton of money in lawyer fees as well as jail time but if it's something like this they're probably gonna be like you could collect the rest of your money you're not getting paid for this but we want you out of the casino you're banned one of the newest weapons is the 360 care. degree high definition camera Similar to Google Earth's ability to see city street details from outer space, the 360 system is like having dozens of cameras digitally combined as one image. This Damn. bird's eye view gives observers the advantage of going back in time and zooming in or out to see Pretty exactly cool stuff. It's what even happened. more advanced now. Now it's probably 4K. The te technology is not used as a live viewing tool. This is strictly a forensics tool that's used after the fact. This is where we would go back after an incident has happened so that way we can zoom into the picture and see where the patron has gone or the theft that has taken place. And we do not miss anything on the casino floor. We can go back seven days and virtually wow. drop into the image and look around. Boom. So do it on the eighth day. Now, they probably hold a lot of this footage, probably for at least 30 days, I would say. Cell phone companies, I believe it's like 12 to 18 months that they hold logs. And then they delete them after that. And they hold that in case of a subpoena and different things for criminal cases and stuff. Um, and it's probably like a, a year. walk from one area of the casino all the way across the other area. For surveillance insiders, the key to catching thieves is being able to identify them. Older eye in the sky systems have lower resolution cameras that make it difficult to see faces clearly. To solve that, the Aria's design and layout was created with high quality cameras shooting at eye level. We can actually grab individuals' faces and grab great ID shots. I'm going to put some of those cameras on choke points, which is the skinny part of the casino. So now we use these cameras every day. Had we not put in these choke points, we'd never have a face shot of them. We have a list of over 6,000 people that have done things that they shouldn't do. They have lists of people who have been, like, kind of sus. But that is not the black book I told you about. The black book means you're banned for life. And it's across all casinos. And you can't set foot in a casino in Vegas. But uh, they do keep lists of the sus people. So if you're sus, they will have your name on it, but it doesn't mean you're banned. You're just pretty sus. A lot of the people in the black book are mob owners, but there's also some really big cheats that are in that book. So there's 35 people in that book. It is the black book. It's spread across all, all casinos, and you're banned from ever entering. However, if you do something wrong in any casino and get caught cheating, all the other casinos know about you too, and you're probably banned as well. All the casinos talk to each other. So if you cheat in one and get caught, if you think you could go to another one, cheat's not going to happen. They're going to know about you. Before they even arrive in the hotel, we've put them through a filter in our database of people who have been trespassed or arrested here. So how do we protect the guests? We stop them before they even check in. Yeah, well... In this exclusive footage provided by the ARIA, we can see from the inside exactly how the coordinated effort of the 360-degree cameras work when combined with the hotel's choke points. The couple who are playing the slots walk away without realizing they've left a purse behind. Are they Within gonna... minutes, they ah, realize... They're gonna get this guy who took the purse. They're gonna track him all the way down with his face and everything because of the choke points in this with the cameras. That's pretty purse cool. Purse is gone and contact security. Security will call and say, hey, we've got a woman who whose purse is missing and she was on row 100. We oh. will track that back even though it happened oh, okay. five or six hours ago with our 360 cameras. So we'll track the thief back to the point where they stole the purse. Using the 360 degree cameras, and they're gonna follow they can this guy all the way travel out. Travel back in time and focus on the exact area around the slot machine where the purse was left behind. Soon after the couple leaves, the 360 degree cameras reveal a man in a black shirt carrying a white jacket. 
He looks around, then settles at the machine next to the one where the couple had been playing. He looks around again, picks up the purse. Oh my god, he's got the bold spot in the back. But to leave the casino, he must pass through a specific path or choke point where the Aria's cameras are focused for his close-up. We catch them with a choke point camera. Now we take that picture of their face and send it out to our security network, our surveillance network, and then we catch them. Damn. Almost instantaneously, wow. the man's face is uploaded to casinos throughout Vegas. There you go. See, I told you, all the casinos, they all talk to each other. They're competitors, but they all talk to each other, especially when dealing with thieves and cheats. And in a couple of hours, he is arrested and booked for theft. The high-tech security system secure. is a definite advantage. But the real inside secret to successful surveillance is having a team who can proactively ID cheaters before they strike. We can look at somebody and tell, okay, they're all right, or no, oh, that behavior doesn't make sense. When you see people um, doing things that they're not supposed to do, they behave differently. They give off tells, just like a poker player is looking for tells. Huh, our... a tell in poker is something you do that signifies possibly what you have. So example, say uh, I'm playing poker the entire night and every time I got like a really good hand, I scratch my eye. I, this, everybody, this is just an example. Nobody does that like, oh my God, sick hand. But there are minuscule things that people do that you could pick up that I've picked up in my time playing poker. Some people, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, one of the common ones will always be to count, to look at their chips. That was one of my biggest ones that I've always found a lot of poker players, uh, when they do have a good hand, their first instinct, look at their chips. And I'd always look at their eyes. You know, I'd always be looking at everybody at the table. First thing they do, they, they look at their cards. I'd be watching them look at their cards. They look at their cards. And one of their instinctual things, if they got a good hand, is to just take a peek at their chips. They want to see how much they have, what they're doing. Why do I know this? I've studied this. I told you, I played poker for a long time, trying to go pro. Okay. Ah, there with his thumb. So card marking, when I used to go to a lot of different uh, underground games in the casino world, I used to keep my eyes out for card marking. Card marking is, uh, especially in those underground games, they'd only have like two to three decks. Any card that has maybe a little bend on the side you know that that's a face card so if you see your opponent holding it and they have a little bend in it that you made that mark to you know that card now so that's what card marking is looks to me this guy is using his thumb to put something on it or he's making an indent we don't know today. so yeah that's card marking now you know uh whatever you and your head are deciding what that marked card will mean whether it mean low hand a suit etc this person is cheap we don't know he is but we suspect he might be so when he walks over to the craps table we think okay we, this is it maybe we're gonna catch something here and yep he's making late bets in the field which means he watches the dice land he sees it's a winner and then he throws his money down the funny thing is when he's doing this we're watching him we're getting security staged to go grab him so there was no question he was found guilty i know he's doing that but he should be told to stop from the dealers there you have two dealers at the craps table the fact that he could do this over and over without getting caught there should be no excuse for someone to post a late bet after the dice roll is out the video never lies once they catch the cheaters on camera, Hotel Security works with Nevada Gaming to make the arrest. Also question, why is it whenever someone's being reprimanded, either it's cops getting someone, why is there always like four like guys always struggling on the one dude? Four big guys, and it looks like the dude is like, must be so superhuman because they're all struggling. It's like every surveillance. ...with Nevada Gaming to make the arrest. Oh, not that. <laughs> that guy was like, fuck you, Nags. Simply to send a message to both the cheaters and to uh, those who may be involved with them that uh, they're not going to get away with this. Catching the cheater red-handed is important, so speed is everything it is when true. it comes to the arrest. Remember the man who was swapping cards? We had to <laughs> go grab him. They didn't grab him quick enough, though, and he was able to get his arm free. He reached into his jacket, popped the card in his in mouth. In his and mouth ate and it. ate it? Oh! That's like getting arrested for, you know, like if you have weed on you. Funny story, I'm going to give you a quick little weed story. Back in the days when I used to smoke weed. Now, like in New York City, it's becoming legal, you know, but back then when I was like 21, it was illegal and like you get in a lot of trouble. I was with my one buddy who doesn't smoke. He never smoked weed in his life. I was rolling a blunt for all my friends. So everybody was like outside the car. We were in a parking lot. All my friends are outside there. I told him to come in with me. He wanted to just chat with me. We had music on and he was just telling me stories, you know, and he doesn't smoke weed at all. And all of a sudden, whoop, whoop, a cop pulls in and I'm like, oh shit. And they, 
knew us kind of because we were always there and they smelt weed more. My buddy starts fucking freaking out. I'm like, oh shit, shit, shit. And I have all this weed on me. So what I did was I rolled the blunt and I put it in and I put it underneath my tongue in my mouth. Cops come over, go out. Like they, they look in, they're like, they open the door. Bro, I have weed, like, you know, like little crumbs, like on me. He's like, this one's got to roll over his shirt. Hop out. And I get out, all right? And like, <laughs> And he turns me around, he starts patting me down. Can't find anything, I got nothing on me, all right? They start searching the car, I can't find anything. And he's looking at me, he was like, where is it? They brought another cop car who went looking, they found nothing, and they they, they couldn't like open my mouth to go check and like force, they, they didn't do any of that. They get out, they get into the car, and they leave. Bro, my buddy was hyperventilating the entire time. And I think the cops were just like, bro, this, this pussy right here is just, I don't think they have anything. I don't think he smokes sweet. Like, my buddy was hyper He was like, oh, 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 we don't have anything. And I'm just sitting there with the fucking weed in my mouth, just like. So they leave, and like, all my friends are like, bro, like, how did you like it? Like, I remember Dave was like, how the fuck did you get away with all that? I was like, I took it out. I was like, yo. And Dave was like, oh! I was like, wait, wait. And like, I opened it up, I was like, and the weed was crisp, it was perfect. No saliva on it, nothing, because like, I had it rolled twice. I opened it, he was like, yo! I was like, let's fucking smoke, baby. As for the card marker, the glass was still on his thumb when they made the arrest. And the past poster? Once pass outnumbered, poster. he went down quietly. And so a pass poster, I don't know, it's not as severe as bringing an instrument. The gambling that they are doing is that whether or not they're going to go to jail and how much time they're going to do. You know, you get caught, that's that's it. Do your time. If, if you're a criminal and you're a cheat, going to jail is part of your job description. There that's is right. another kind of insider working Las Vegas, and it's one that has casinos worried. It's when a dealer crosses over to the dark side. Even the most sophisticated tools can't always stop the casino insider who knows exactly how to cheat fast. Look at the bending. This is not what you're supposed to do. Knows exactly. Look at that card sitting on the table bent like that. That is not how you deal. About 30% of our arrests involve employees one way or another. We have seen numerous cheats involving millions of dollars with the dealer or other pit uh, personnel. The story of one of Vegas's most infamous cheats begins far from the bright lights of the Strip in 2002 with a dealer named Fawn Tron who works at the small Saquon Casino near San Diego, California. Tron. He was a gambler through and through. He dealt cards at Saquon for a while, but then he got fired. Armed with an advantage of knowing how security works from the inside, Tron hatches his plan to cheat the casino. But to do it, he needs help and he's got it in all the right places. Oh boy. His wife, Van, is also a dealer at Saquon, and her brother, Ty Tran, just happens to manage the Asian table games. Ty Tran knew intimately. That is one thing I'd be very suspicious and I would not want to have as an entire family, and then that's why you have nepotism rules, an entire family working at a casino. I, I assume different casinos outside of state, separate, but like all in the same as a little. How each game worked so he could help develop their protocols of uh, dealing uh, for security, what have you. Well, I mean, he that's why there's nepotism rules in, in the corporate industry and in workplaces, because if your mom is the CEO, you're not supposed to work there because if you're the VP and you're her son, mom, the marketing department will give me the budget I asked for. Okay, son, I'll make sure of it. Give him another budget of one mil. So that's where his knowledge came in. The Tran gang focuses on mini Baccarat. Players can bet on either hand. Ah, so did you notice there? Notice that there's a pen in her hand and a piece of paper here. So in Baccarat, what you could do is uh, you could actually write down the last hands. Does it help? It does, I guess. It's still gonna be random. Same thing like on a roulette wheel. If you go to a roulette wheel at a casino, you'll see there'll be a screen with the past numbers showing the last numbers. That, I believe, is actually useful for your bets. If you get the same consistent dealer who, say, has been working a shift for like three hours, right? It's gonna be muscle memory of the same motion spinning the wheel. Rules allow players to openly track and record cards in winning hands. It's part of the game. So you can have a sheet of paper writing each of the order of the cards that are coming out which is kind of how they got the idea of tracking cards because you're allowed to do it. A member of the Tran organization tracks the cards. Then the dealer, who's also a member, uses his skill set to pull off one of the oldest tricks in the book, 
the false shuffle. False shuffle. A false shuffle. shuffle is simply making it appear that you're mixing the cards, but Correct. you're really not. So you could start the false shuffle from uh, mixing, knowing where the cards are, putting them together. Basically, a false shuffle is, it looks like a casino shuffle, but you're leaving the top cards the same. A lot of magicians use this. This is Fantran. So you can see there's a large chunk of cards that right there, like I was saying. So when he's moving them in, he knows the high cards that he's grabbing, you know, from there. He's stacking them at the top. And when he shuffles these, he will leave those cards still at the top, but give the illusion that he's actually shuffling the cards when all those cards are going to be stacked at the top, putting them together. After the dealer. I want to show you really quick is uh, let me find him. I watch a lot of him. I think he's the best at this. This guy is so good. It is unbelievable. In this video, I want to show you just how fast you can stack pocket aids is for a six-handed game Why? Texas Hold'em. We use the two red aces for this. They start on top of the deck and notice I give the deck just two shuffles. It only takes a few seconds. Now I usually would give the cards a cut but for now I just want to show you that the stacking worked. You can see all the cards come off the top and there are pocket jacks to get some money in the pot. There's pocket aces to win. Frank. Uh, I highly suggest check him out his shorts. Sorry to interrupt from the video but I wanted I know it correlates with this shuffle. It finishes the false shuffle. The Tran players at the table must wait for their tracker to signal them that the winning sequence of cards are in play. Because they know the exact order of these cards and who's going to win, all bets are dramatically increased. They only needed one person who really knew what the betting scheme was. So that one person will make a bet and then everyone else that's with them at the table will make that same bet. Interesting. All of a sudden the entire table wins. Yep. To perfect their skills, the Tran organization does a number of test runs at the small, quiet Saiquan Casino. First, a lot of people will uh, cheat at like uh, Indian reservation casinos. That doesn't have a lot of security, is more for locals and things like that. You don't need to take notes on this, I'm just explaining what he means by that! Surveillance spots Van Tran not following shuffling procedure. She is fired. Yeah, that's but nice. by then, they know it's a their deal. scam works and they're ready for larger action. By early 2003, the Tran organization has expanded to include about 15 family members. Wow. Soon, they take their cheat on the road to Cash Creek Casino near Sacramento, California. Before long, they are making big money. In just one month, they clear $158,000. Wow. They want more, but to do it, they'll need more insiders who are willing to fix the deck. Because they went from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, they had to have different dealers cheating in every jurisdiction they would go into different casinos and they would just have a friendly chat up with, with the dealers oh my god if you guys out there this is a bro talk we're dumb we fall for anything especially when it comes to women if a woman approaches you on to cheat at your job do not accept it i know sometimes we think with the wrong head but don't your career your life and the track and path is most important. Do the right thing, always stay strong like that. People that might already have had a gambling problem, so they would pick out their vulnerabilities if they might have some financial situation or... That's really sad, that, that'll that happen. Poor guy's got a gambling problem, and if you have a gambling problem, you should not be around gambling all the time, so you shouldn't be a dealer. If you do like to gamble, there's nothing wrong with that as entertainment. I don't think you should be a dealer or working in the industry if you do any sort of gambling, even like a, a good amount of recreational. If someone is on the fence, about joining the organization, the Tran recruiters get creative. Sometimes Van Tran would go into the casinos and kind of flirt with the guys, trying to get them to, well, maybe we can date a little bit if you want to try doing this cheat with us. And they would just play up that it's a great lifestyle. It's so predatory. It's preying on vulnerability is what it comes down to, male or female. And it's horrible. Join our, our organization and all you have to do is learn how to do the shuffle. Terrible. By 2003, the Tran organization consists of several former dealers and card trackers. Damn. They all have inside. They literally have an organization. The they crisscross the country, scamming smaller casinos, winning thousands every time. They will sit there for two or three decks, possibly, and then they will leave, and they'll leave the city or the state. Actually being smart, leaving, and not staying at one place, which people The Tran gang is long Green. gone by the time casino accountants notice something is wrong. They have it down to a science where they want to know how each table is doing. So that's where the first inkling that something was wrong came from, because the table might lose 8% a night. Um, 
and all of a sudden this it's specific 15. table with this specific dealer is losing 15 to 20 percent yeah. of it so they went to their video that's a very big jump especially odds stacked against the player well it doesn't seem like a crazy lot you're like oh it's 15 percent. that's All a lot people playing a lot a lot of these gamblers that are cheating they're all using their player clubs cards to get the free perks that go along with wait it. were they using this so the casinos have a record of exactly who was playing at the table how they much were they were using theirs or how much they won at a gaming conference in 2003, casino security directors start to compare notes. There had been uh, intelligence in the community that members of the Tran family and Fung Trung were up to something. One of the security operators at Cash Creek Casino outside Sacramento had noticed that there was a certain group of people that were doing something wrong at their tables. Okay. They think they're cheating. They don't know exactly what. I, I'll gamble like, you know, once in a blue moon. I don't leave, so it doesn't happen quite often. But once in a while, say I go with my buddies. I, my buddy's birthday, we go to AC or something, right? And, you know, I'll do a little bit of gambling, right? Play some slots or something. Maybe like, you know, a little bit of blackjack. Just have some fun. I will tell you this. I don't want anybody tracking me. I'll use my player's card. Can we offer you a player's card? No. Giga Chad. I don't want to be tracked. Gins trying to document the Tran organization's activities. The gang runs their operation with military precision using cell phones and hand signals to communicate with each other. In this video, gang member Willie Tran is tracking cards and calling them back to a van where they are being recorded. Oh my God. He keeps his hair long to cover the cell phone earpiece. He would bring his girlfriend with him so that his girlfriend would be playing and he could be reading off the cards, but to anyone around them, it looks like he's just talking to his girlfriend. After months of honing their skills, they are confident and believe they are ready to cheat Vegas. See, you move up. This is where you get caught. But why? You're making all this money. You're making 150 grand, right? 150,000. You're making all this money. Why go to Vegas? This always boggles my mind. You know what? Maybe I get it because like I'm a, I'm a professional gamer. With my record of 71, I always want to make the difficulty harder and harder. Why? I could play in the hard difficulty, impress everyone. Why do I got to go another notch up? They knew that Las Vegas would have been a cash cow for them if they could figure out how to get through their security. The security in Vegas is world-class, yep. and they knew it. In late 2004, the Tran gang pulls into Vegas, but their reputation precedes them. We were aware of the Tran organization, that they had been operating in California, and we thought that they were the possibility they would come to Las Vegas. We were not aware that uh, uh, Mr. Tran here was going to show up, but in fact, he was one of the ones that uh, was running the operation here in Las Vegas. In the video, we see Fat recording the order of the cards as they are played. After the false shuffle, Tran waits patiently for the portion of the deck that was never shuffled. Those are the cards they have the exact order for. There are three members of the organization okay. that are sitting All on right. the table. And Fat is on the edge, signaling to these guys. The cards that Fat had recorded earlier start to play out on the table. Here's how it unfolds. Fat Tran signals to the table that it's time to bet. Okay. The player in the center bets on the banker, knowing it is the guaranteed winner. Soon thereafter, other Tran insiders put down larger wagers on the same banker bet. In Baccarat, there are two hands. You got the player and the banker. You could bet on either one. Knowing by the pattern of the cards coming out, they could place and they're going to get a guaranteed win. So after this one getting the signal, placing it on the player bet, they will put it out. The rest will follow suit. It's basically just, you pick, it's like a 50-50 shot in a way. Between the three of them. After the hit, Fat quietly rips up his handwritten log of the card order and disposes it in two trash cans in different areas of the casino. He doesn't know it, but everywhere he goes, he's on camera. There's the evidence right there. Get out of the casino and like put it in like trash cans all around the city. Or eat it. Bro, you don't want to leave any crumbs. Yeah, good. Look at you guys. I've taught you well. Let's get on a bus to Vegas, baby. Calm down. Security collects the trash and pastes the box log back together. There's evidence. After three years of cheating across the country, authorities have what no one else could get. They were on him like a hawk at that point. Their greed, basically, of wanting more money and wanting more casinos. Going to Vegas. Yet. Where you go down? Yup. Terrible. Although weakened after the Vegas bust, the remaining members of the organization still won't give up the cheat. But really? once again, they'll need to find dirty dealers oh, on man. the inside. Oh man, they actually—they were definitely more visible 
And then since they were spreading out across the country trying to find these casinos, they were introducing a lot of new people to this scheme who went immediately to their security and their supervisor saying, there's this group out here and they're wanting to cheat. The FBI also knows the gang needs dealers and are ready to help them find one. They're gonna Whoa, plant baby. the dealer? Oh boy! How you doing? Hey, man. How you doing? This is the actual undercover footage from the FBI sting as they catch insider Fawn Tron trying to recruit a dealer. We have a confidential informant. Basically a snitch. He got caught. As you know, with a lot of things, uh, being an informant, he's going to get a lesser time if he could help pin down the bigger fish. You know, what do we do with surveillance cannot see? Here, Fung is describing to his prospective dealer, too, that you really need to know what's happening in a casino and what's happening with the security and what happens with the protocol to get away with things. You're only stealing once a month. Mm-hmm. But Tron, like most crooks, can't oh, seem to practice what he preaches. And in the same breath that he talks about being low key, he brags about the spoils of his oh, cheating. Oh my God. I have seven cars in my Oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. Everybody know me. In May 2007, like, armed with overwhelming video evidence, the authorities move in like, on the rest of the Tran organization. Fawn Tron and 46 other members of the gang Done. are indicted for wow. racketeering, money laundering, and theft. Fawn Tron is sentenced to 70 months in prison and ordered to pay back millions of dollars to oh, the casinos and the IRS. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, because he wasn't paying taxes on that income. Even if you steal, the IRS demands that you tell them all of your income. So if you rob the bank, you gotta pay taxes on that money you stole from the bank. In January 2011, Van Tran pleads guilty to racketeering charges and is awaiting sentencing. Oh, wow. Uh, we were able to prove that they had cheated $7 million uh, over the course of the scheme. We do believe that they took more than that, oh but we were God. able to prove $7 million. Wow! Not every insider comes from the casino. In the world of betting on professional and college... We're going to get into some sports bet. I know a little bit about this with sports betting and some cheats in sports bet. Okay! I, I know you guys are on sports fans, but man, with sports betting and uh, some of the, the rigging that has been done, match fixing and stuff is really interesting. In just one year, $2.4 billion was legally wagered at casino sports books. And where there is money, there are cheaters. I would say basketball would be the sport that it would be easiest to yeah. do some business with because Point you get one or two key players and they play a bad game or, True. or they don't suit up. Easy to miss shots or, you know, easy to drag out time more so in basketball than in football. Plus, less amount of people on the court. The biggest vulnerability with a lot is college kids. Shocker, right? Boxing also is another big rigged one, but, but basketball is a very popular one because it's easy to miss shots. Through the years, Box. Vegas sports books have had to deal with fixed fights, horse races, basketball, baseball, and football games. Sometimes at the hand of a crooked player, owner, or referee. Should have become wrestling the most realistic sport out there. That sport isn't rigged at all. I wouldn't be surprised if they still put out lines for who's going to win the WWF title. Wouldn't put it past me. People will bet on anything. Believe it or not, there's actually plenty of betting on pro wrestling. One of the sites I frequent posts the under and over odds before every pay-per-view. Really? Lots of different outcomes, such as DQ, Countout, Dirty Pin, etc. Just because the finish to a match might be scripted doesn't mean it always plays out that way. It's very That's common wild. for audibles to get called and finishes to get changed, even mid-match. Refs are also instructed to play it straight if a wrestler screws up. That's wild. Steven Smith of Dallas, Texas has been shooting hoops since he was six years old. My mother said once I laid eyes on it, that, that was my sport. And I just... I had to have a ball in my hand. At 40, Smith seems like any other weekend warrior. Las one of Vegas the Airport does have slots. Yep. Last time I was there, they have a rocky slot. Oh, a rocky slot. Well, don't play that one. You're going to lose a lot of that one because they got to pay the royalties. Bro, you just gave me a brilliant idea. A bagel slot machine. Put your money in. You might get a bagel. 
might not, might get $700 worth of bagels, might not. The possibilities are as limited as bagels. Cool, so when you pull it and the bagel comes out to hand you your one bagel winning, the cream cheese spread on it, it just gets smushed. What happens if you win $700 worth of bagels? Just... Oh, you get a piece of paper to go get the bagel sent. Oh, all right. And there's just a guy sitting there with tons of bagels. He's like, how many bagel? Oh, you're a winner. No, give me the money. I'll go buy a fucking bagel. When you're in your early 20s and you're immature and all you think about so it is college money and stuff like that, you don't Let's think about it. Let's go, baby. So In 1994, senior Stevan Smith is Again, captain college. of the Arizona college. State Sun Devils basketball team and a rising star. Pundits are already considering number 44 a lock Next. for the NBA draft. Not Damn, gonna lie, I kinda want to bagel now. I know, I'm pretty fucking hungry, actually. So I talk about the NBA, Next. NBA. I just kept working hard, just hoping, you know, one day that my dream will come true. Smith wants the NBA and everything that goes with it. But living large costs money, and Smith has none. Like I was saying, a, a college kid is very vulnerable at this point, especially if they're really, really good, enticed with money and all these different things, and you're young. It's dangerous, and there's a lot of money that go in college sports, especially college football, also college basketball. You have March Madness. You have so many different things. Woman ...who introduces him to the world of sports betting. So what happened here is he lost 10K because he's a bad gambler. He shouldn't be gambling in the first place. He's down 10K to this kid. In college, all right? So how is he going to make it back? Shave off a couple of points. He could make some money. With no money, he's in trouble. Until Bookie Silman offers him a way out. He said, fix the game. He's like, just control, you know, the outcome. So you can win the game. But just make sure you don't win by how many points I tell you. Basically, there's a spread in basketball. Like, this team versus this team. This team has to win by four points, okay? If they don't win by four points, this team wins. If team A is the better team. Team B is the shit team, so you expect them to lose, but they can't lose by more than four. So what they're asking him to do is not let his team win by X amount of points. That's what's going on here. What Silman is talking about is called point, point shaving. shaving. And it's illegal. Yes. At the time, Smith had never heard of it. But he figured as long as he didn't have to lose the game, no harm, no foul. Which is, you think about that, your team's still winning the game, you just can't win by a lot. You would think like, well, that's not so bad, but yeah, that's illegal, it's point shaving. Gambling, you talk about shooting dice, playing poker. I wasn't educated to point shaving. To understand point shaving, you have to understand sports betting. Ah, are they gonna explain it? Let's see, he's gonna do a better job explaining me. Casinos don't care who wins or loses. They just want half of the gamblers to bet on one team. I'm good, bro. To make teams even for betting, every game is handicapped. A point spread or betting line is used to level the playing field so the underdog can be equal to the favorite. Yeah. The point differential Let's or spread go, is baby. determined by Vegas odds makers. And those guys are really good. Like for example, me versus Cinnamon in a game of basketball. Obviously, the favorite is me. You're all gonna dump your mold coins on me because you know I'm gonna dunk on him. He's like, like, like two foot three. I'm gonna win by like 20, right? No one's gonna bet on Cinnamon. Vegas can't have that. So what are you gonna do? Well, we're gonna give Cinnamon points. Cinnamon is getting like 30 points, right? So now I have to beat Cinnamon by 30. If I don't beat him by 30, everybody who bets Cinnamon wins. If I beat him by more than 30, everybody who bet on me wins. So now you have to add things over on the side to entice people to be like, yo, I don't think, I, I know Nags will win, but I don't think he's gonna win by like 30. Nags, I'll give you five dollars to throw, done. Actually, we'll talk later in DMs. Cool. And that right there is point shaving. Point shaving changes the odds when a player or group of players makes sure that their team's margin of victory is less than the point spread determined by the bookies. Good job. Yep. Audible wing. In order for Smith to get out of debt, <laughs> Silman will tell him how many points he can win by, and no more. Silman agrees to wipe out Smith's debt and pay him $20,000 for each game he shaves. So I'm thinking, I can win the game? Oh, okay, cool. 
Bro, did you hear $20,000 per game? He'll win with his team, but he just has to shave off some points. On January 27th, 1994, Silman and Smith kickstart their scam against Oregon State. Las Vegas oddsmen set Smith's ASU as 14-point favorites. Oh, wow. Basically, his team will win by 14 or more. Silman and gang bet heavily on Oregon State. Smith fixes the game by slacking on defense. The Sun Devils win, but Next. only by six points. Since ASU doesn't cover the Vegas spread, Silman wins. After the game, campus bookie Silman delivers Smith's payout, $20,000 for a job well done. Did I accept the money? Yes. I was trying to live that fast life. Silman and Smith fixed two more oh, games without no, drawing any bro. heat. You should have just paid your 10K, took the 10K, forget that ever happened, bro. The green. Flush with success, Silman lets a lot of people in on the secret. Silman's friends from Chicago and New Jersey fly to Vegas for the next game. Oh, my God. Now Fifth, he's bringing in the boys Saturday to bet. Morning. Smith oh, and his no. Sundowns prepare to face the University of Washington at home. There's nothing extraordinary about this game yet. What? In Las Vegas, college-age gamblers hit the sports books as soon as they open. They were like a bull in a china shop when they were making their bets. They just oh, kept coming no. repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Oh, no. Instead of like every couple hours maybe popping in and making a play. Everybody heard it, but someone was talking about it? Bro, college kids, you think that's going to stay low? Somehow, all the wagering is on Washington. <laughs> In oh my god everybody is betting on the underdog 11 point favorites all college kids the line on the arizona state game opened at 11 and it dropped to three by tip off and that time i don't think you understand how crazy that is the amount of money that had to be rolling in on on the underdog team is absurd for it to drop down to three from 11 they check with the other casinos they found that pattern of betting was only here in las vegas <laughs> and was all over town at that time there was no knowledge that a crime it's was crazy committed. we just knew that something odd was happening the betting action is way out of the ordinary suspicious sportsbook managers alert the ncaa in a normal pac-10 game uh, regular season we we might write eight ten thousand somewhere in that general area but for this particular game we, we wrote well into the low six figures. It was an unbelievable... Six figures of bets, bro. Usually for that type of game, eight, at like 10,000 bets. It's like a thousand percent increase. At tip-off, the betting line has dropped so dramatically... ASU was it a pick -em? can only win by two points or two less. Two points! Now, since it's so low, he has to win the game basically by a buzzer beater. Oh my God. Myth to successfully throw the game. The pressure is on. But what's going to suck is they're going to probably be up by like 10 points. So he's going to be like chucking the ball and it's just going to look so obvious. At halftime, Smith's fix is working. The score, Arizona State 25, wow. Washington That's only at half though. It's only at half. Sun Devils coach Bill Frieder is given the heads up that something is not right. What? In the locker room, the coach confronts Smith, the team's captain. He was furious. Oh, yeah, I can't say it on camera, but it's some bleep, 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 bleep going on. Be afraid to get angry. After Frieder's halftime tongue lashing, Smith abandons the point shaving scheme. He goes Whoa. off. Okay. People are not gonna be happy with him, bro. If he throws this, I don't. We don't know the outcome. I don't know the outcome. That college kid, right, is being a bookie. You think that college kid has the money to back up everybody and everything? No. He's usually a runner for another bookie, who's a runner for bigger guys that are running the operation. So this could get ugly. It could get ugly. It wasn't even nothing to think about. It was over. <laughs> We went out second half and blew them out. Wow. Most observers reported this game as a game of two halves. The first half, ASU was totally inept, and the second half, they it's were... Went nuts. You know, Final Four quality. <laughs> Next. That's crazy. Damn. Everyone who bet on Washington lost. is out of luck. Lost. Smith knows he has to uh -oh. face an angry Silman who lost all of his bets. Since we lost the game, I'm thinking, you know, the same money he was giving me, I have to give to him. 
I go home, Benny's there. So I'm saying, don't worry about it, man. I got your money upstairs. So I was prepared to give him $40,000. It's like, nah. It's bigger than that. So he was just gonna give him his 40K, right? Nah, dude, it's bigger than that. Because that 40K is nothing compared to the line of people and the shadow group running the show behind. He is just a runner, bro. The hell you talking about? You scared? <laughs> Ain't nobody just gonna lose. And everybody be still alive. He left town that night. I didn't talk to nobody. My best friend. My mother, I didn't tell nobody. <laughs> Bro, just bounced. And you know what? Probably the smartest thing. Yeah, it's always bigger than that whenever you're dealing with a bookie. So like, say I'm a runner, right? I'm dealing with you guys, right? You place your bets to me. I pay you out and I collect your money. You have to deal with me. Whenever you win, I get the money from, say, my, my buddy Joe. But Joe is dealing directly with someone else. There's a group that has the money. You don't want to piss off and mess with. Because then once it gets down, they're like, well, who's the one that didn't pay up? And it's like, uh, Joe's like, yo, Nags, he, he hasn't paid me yet. Because you guys haven't paid me. They're like, I don't the money they haven't paid me who is that i'll be like this is a chat so you know frankie and tony are gonna come by and be like hey chad how you doing you gotta pay next his money right and you guys would be like no giga chad no giga chad and then pop 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 your knees are broken and then you're gonna pay me after weeks of forensic auditing of the sports book records they uncover evidence of unusually high betting on the march 5th game and several more asu games before that if you're taking advantage of the knowledge of the outcome of an event to then defraud a casino or a sports book, then you're guilty of fraud. Yeah. Three months later, Smith wins Athlete of the Year. Oh, wow. As for the scam, rumors of the point shaving persist, but nothing comes of it, and Smith thinks it's behind him. Oh. I was gonna beat it. What happened? How did they find out? Like, how could you prove it? Then, in June 1994, Smith's big moment arrives, the NBA draft. Mm -hmm. He can finally cash in on his talents, legally. But now, the whispers of throwing a game are no longer whispers. Oh, no. And the NBA doesn't want to play with Smith. Oh! I thought I was untouched. No! But that wasn't reality. All Pac-10 team captain, highest scorer in ASU history, number 44, Stevan Smith, goes undrafted. You know what that's the equivalent of today? Being canceled. Smith spends the next three years playing minor league ball, everywhere from Paris, France, to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, trying to rebuild his reputation. It takes years, but in 1997, the Dallas Mavericks come call. Oh! All right, so now he made it to the NBA. Smith's not the only one whose luck has changed. In Las Vegas, after years of investigating, the Nevada Gaming Control Board and the FBI crack the point-shaving case. They managed to work back through people that they had indicted, people that had given them information, to one of the players on the ASU team. I didn't think it would blow up like, like oh it did. Oh my God! So he makes it to the NBA and the FBI, they're still investigating. I mean, I don't blame him. That's a, that's a, oh my God. It blew up huge. Who is it? Step back, please. And the feds came to me, and I found out the numbers. And it was over $1.3 million lost on the game. That was scary. Smith was in the NBA at the time that he was indicted. Uh, so it cost him his professional oh, basketball Oh, wow. Career. That's why he's talking about it now. He would have never talked about it. He was basically getting canceled, but he redeemed himself from cancellation until another twit longer came out and they were like, I have the evidence and showed it. And then he was canceled. In November, 1999, Damn. Smith goes before a judge and gets a year in prison and a new number. Wow. Well, Steven Smith to 010448. Wow. You know, that was my federal prison number. If that ain't real, I don't know what the hell is real. Smith is released from prison in 2000. Won the European Cup. You don't ever talk about that. Oh, man. You don't ever talk about the fact I had a 3.5 GPA. And oh, I was a male man. student at the end of the year. I beat I feel Mixon. Just gonna now talk about points. One of the top golfers in the world. They don't talk about that. They don't talk about the records I still have wrapped right to this day. Don't they don't talk about my three-time Overwatch championships. They don't talk about the countless endurance win streak in a row. They don't talk about my speed and run record in Jump King. They talk about the one loss in Terraria on a foolish bet. I feel for this man, and I understand what he's going through. Survivor.